Hello and welcome. I'm Ginger Lawrence and I'm a volunteer and board member of Wild Seed Project based in Portland, Maine. And all of us here at Wild Seed Project hope to get all of you out there planting more native plants where you live. In this video, I'll be showing you how to plant native plants in pots from wild seed. There's been a steady decline in our native plant population and this is due to land development and those nasty invasive species that love to colonize in disturbed areas. And these invasive species have displaced our native plants. Our native plants are an important source of food for our insects, birds, and other forms of wildlife. So it's comforting to know that we can do something about this by increasing the native plants in the landscapes around us. So what are the advantages to growing native plants from seed? Well, there are many. First of all, you save a ton of money. From this little four inch pot, which we'll be planting today, you might get 10 or 15 plants. You'll have plenty for yourself and plenty for your neighbor. It's a whole lot better than an overgrown zucchini. When we grow a native plant from seed, we get to observe it through its entire life cycle and we get to really know the plant. We start with the tiny seed and eagerly await signs of growth in early spring. In summer, we get bloom and then seeds in the fall. And we start to be able to recognize the plant in natural surroundings. If you're walking in the woods or by meadows, you'll start to see the plant with its leaves and won't have to just identify it by its bloom. When we grow plants from wild seed, we know that each plant will be unique and different from every other, just as we are different from our siblings. Imagine if we all looked alike. My mother had trouble remembering our names even though we all looked different. This ensures biodiversity in the plant world. In a biodiverse plant community, we might have some plants that are more tolerant of heat or of drought, or some that may be more resistant to disease. Biodiversity in a plant population allows that population to adapt to changing conditions such as climate. Almost all the plants available at nurseries and therefore planted in our own gardens are cultivated varieties of plants that have been selected for a desirable trait and then propagated to keep that trait. You always know a cultivated variety because it has a catchy name in single quotes. Some examples may include chocolate ruffles, or double scoop, how can you resist? Or if you have a sense of humor, how about little port or outhouse delight? The problem with these plants is that they are reproduced asexually, which results in a population of genetically identical clones that have no ability to adapt to changes in the environment, including climate. And this is a problem for the plant world. So while it's okay to have some of these plants in our garden, if you must have a pasta named Outhouse Delight, I hope that you plant many native plants around it so that you can help us at Wild Seed reach our goal of people planting 70% native plants in their home landscapes. The best time to plant native plants from seed is from late fall to early winter. And that's because almost all of our native plants need winter to germinate. These plants have been around since ancient times. They've adapted to winter, and winter is part of their life cycle. Now I said almost all. We still have a small selection of plants that will germinate the first spring if planted in very early spring. And it's from that selection that I've chosen the plants that I'm planting today. The first is Scotch bellflower, we're going to do partridge pea, spotted bee balm, flax leaved aster, and black eyed coneflower. So I invite you to visit the Wild Seed Project website at wildseed.net. And there you'll find all the information you need about growing native plants. We have a seed sale offering many varieties of plants that will include plant descriptions growing conditions, and also you'll be able to find out if your particular plant needs a full winter or if it can be planted in early spring. The materials you need include potting soil. I'll be using four inch pots. C. 
seeds, uh, plant tags, and I have mine all written out already. And we recommend with plant tags that you don't write them with ink or with marker. Those tend to disappear. And then in the spring, when your plants start germinating, you have absolutely no idea what they are. So use a pencil. Uh, lastly, uh, a coarse sand. We're going to sprinkle sand over the seeds once we have them in the pots. So the first thing we'll do is fill our pots with potting soil. We have some pine needles that got in here somehow. We're going to gently press the soil down, very gently. You don't want to compress the soil. When I was first doing this, the first year, I had not pressed the soil down. And what ended up happening was that I had about half the amount of soil in the pots that I thought I had. Okay. So once your pots are filled with potting soil, you're going to take your seeds. I'll start with partridge pea seeds. I love how these seeds are all so different. And I'm just going to take and actually with them in my hand. I'm just going to sprinkle these seeds over the surface of the soil. After sprinkling, we'll take your sand and just sprinkle the sand over the surface of the soil. And the purpose of the sand is that it protects the seed from being blown away. It helps to keep the, the seeds moist. And also, uh, the sand has allows a little light to go through. So once your seed is planted and your sand is spread, pick the right tag, put it in, and push it all the way to the bottom. I have pictures to show you of the five species of plants that I'll be planting today that will germinate this spring and a couple will bloom this summer. The first that we just planted is partridge pea, pretty yellow flower. These pages are taken from the Wild Seed Project website where you'll find a picture of the flower, a description of the flower, growing conditions, and you'll be able to find any specific recommendations for planting the seed. The second we'll be doing is a Scotch bell flower. It's a pretty little low growing um, bell shaped flower. It has a uh, very wispy foliage. And although it is called Scotch bell flower, it is a native plant of North America but I've seen it growing by the roadsides in Scotland. Third, I have flax-leaved aster. All the asters can be bloomed in early, can be planted in early spring, but this one is an interesting low-growing aster. It's also called bristly aster, and um, it's a great plant for really dry, sandy, or rocky soils, and it forms a really nice ground cover in the front of the border. Next is spotted bee balm, and this is a really funky, interesting looking plant. It's got tiered flowers that are an interesting color of a uh, combination of pink and green, and it's a great pollinator plant. All of our native plants are great pollinator plants. And last but not, not, me, oops, last but not least, our black-eyed coneflowers. And these are flowers that we see growing by the roadsides and in fields and we'll be doing that one also. So I have my seeds ready to go. Ooh, they're all different. Here I have flax-leaved aster, and this is spotted bee balm. It's very small seeds. Black-eyed coneflower here. I'll pull that back a little so you can see. And then there is the Scotch bell flower, which are these minuscule seeds. So I'm just going to start by planting the Scotch bell flower because that one's done a little bit differently from the others. So I have my pot that's full of soil. And 
and I'm just going to take my seeds and just sprinkle them over the surface of the soil. And what's unique about planting Scotch Bellflower is that it needs light to germinate. So these seeds are not going to be covered. I'll put my tag in and I'm ready to plant all the rest. Well, that was exhausting. So our pots are ready to go outside. Since this is April, I'm going to choose a site that's part sun, part shade, but that does not have the hot afternoon sun. I'll also give them a little bit of water so that they don't dry out. If this were late fall or early winter, I would just take these pots, put them right outside, and let Mother Nature do the rest. We advise putting a piece of hardware cloth as some kind of protective covering over the plants if you're, when you have them outside for the winter, and that's to keep the rodents from going in and doing their mischief. So hopefully in a couple weeks, you'll start to see some growth from your plants. I'm just starting to see some growth from a goldenrod that I planted last fall. So as the season progresses, uh, this plant will eventually overgrow the four inch pot. And what you can do at that point is take it out of the four inch pot, maybe break it into some large clumps and put it in a larger pot. So when fall comes, you can put those plants right in your soil. So I have a larger pot to show you. This pot doesn't contain too many plants. Let me put the screen down a little bit. But there are still many, many seedlings in here. So I'm going to take my hand, reach in underneath the leaves on top of the soil, and pull the plant in, out of the pot. I've already loosened up some of these clumps because these roots were grown together. But what you'll do is you'll just pry apart the clumps of seedlings. And I've just divided this into four, but I could divide it into many more. And these seedlings can go right in the soil in September. And I wouldn't wait too long to plant because sometimes they might have a tendency to frost heave. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed sharing my passion for growing native plants with you. And I again invite you to visit the Wild Seed Project website at wildseedproject.net for all the information you need. And if you need to contact us with any questions, you can do so there. And I couldn't end this video without also inviting you to make a donation to support our work. Thank you. Now don't go anywhere. I'm going to take you out in my backyard and show you my native plant nursery. Hang on, I'll be back in a bit. So I've got the plants we planted inside and I'm putting them here in my bed next to plants that I planted last fall and early winter. So these plants have all had a winter period of cold except for the new ones I'm putting in. And I see that I forgot to put a tag in one of them. That's going to be the mystery plant. I also wanted to show you uh, plants that were started from seed the fall of 2018. So I'm preparing these plants for a plant sale, which is why they're in small pots. And even though these are just showing young growth, they'll be pretty good size by the time uh, mid-spring comes. So that's that. I also wanted to show you the covering I used over this bed. This is a four by eight bed. It holds many, many plants. You could have your own plants there. And this is made from hardware cloth, and it's an effort to try to keep the rodents from getting into the bed and doing some serious mischief. They can be little delinquents from time to time. So that's it. Uh, happy planting and stop watching me go out and plant some native plants.